Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to everyone. Um, I will continue our uh, class for today inshallah but uh, before I move to the, uh, the, the the topic that I plan for the course I would address the questions that I saw uh, in the chat box last week um, so I thank one student uh, one participant obviously pointed the discrepancy in terms of uh, uh, the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu passed 11 uh, year, 11 Hijrah, and uh, Osman Radiyallahu uh, Anh started a compilation of the Quran in year two, 24 or 25. So I say it was like two, uh, 20 years. So uh, the, the, I actually um, corrected it. Thank you so much for the uh the for, for pointing out that uh, issue so uh, what we can conclude i think it is safe to say that um, uh, after the demise of the prophet a little over than 20 years the quran uh, was uh, complete uh, completely compiled i think that's a safe conclusion to put it that way i found some uh, dates but i could not corroborate so i could not put it on the slide um, uh, so the, the, the dating is important for us to kind of, sometimes we hear from the revisionists that, uh, uh, that claim the Quran was compiled much later or much earlier than, you know, uh, what's the truth, right? So in our history, it is documented during the time of, the, of Osman that it was comp uh, completed during that time. Yeah? So that is the fact. So. Um, before I start uh, the lecture for this week, let me move to uh, this uh, particular uh, topic. Uh, what I call is the uh, uh, Osmanic, um, Osmanic must have and uh, the, um, the, the, the um, some issues related to it. Let me uh, do this. Okay, I want to share the slide. I hope that. I understand that you can see the whole uh, screen right now, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. All right. All right. So um, this is to do with some question that we uh, heard last week, you know, either uh, um, this uh, we heard about uh, there are different versions of the Quran that we recite today and so forth. I think some of these issues are related here. Bear with me. I'm going uh, to go quickly because um, these are some uh, some related issues that are already settled, but it comes to us because you know we heard about this. Uh, so what's uh, what's the deal, right? So here, um, uh, for example, when we talk about the Osmani Mustaf that was copied during the time of Osman. Uh, um, the question is uh, how many copies? So uh, some scholar will say between four to eight, and do they meet uh, letter for letter with each other? Uh, the, the answer is no, because the different copies, um, Osman order to be copied, differ uh, with each other in a few letters. So in a few letters, right? Obviously, um, remember when Osman and said that when you, uh, the, the four, the team of Mubayan, and, and, um, and the rest of the team, uh, when there is a disagreement, uh, then they should decide um, to take the dialect of the Quraysh, right? So, so the difference uh, may be little. Uh, there is no extra verse. Okay, this is important for us to understand because sometimes we hear like uh, we have different version of the Quran. Is there any additional verses or surah in the Quran that somewhere out there that we couldn't find today? Maybe buried somewhere, right? No, it is not that way. So there is no extra verse in any of the Mus'haf, but there are additional and different letters in some of the Mus'haf. Um, so um, why the, uh, the, the the difference? I mean, um, can it just be one copy, like um, eight copies that is just similar, every letter, every half, every word? Um, 
It cannot be done that way because of this. Um, here is to accommodate the various recitation of a particular verse, which I will explain later what we have come across, uh, the ahruf, uh, the sabat ahruf. Right? So the seven ahruf. Uh, the, the fact remained true that, okay, the fact remained true that the Prophet recited the verse uh, in number of ways. Uh, so there are seven ahlu means uh, uh, theoretically we can say uh, you know seven ways. Um, what it means is that, um, for example, here um, in terms of writing, uh, I hope that um, I can't find the. Um, I hope we can imagine this. Mim lam kaf in Surah Al Fatiha. We can read it with Maliki, with short Maliki, right? Uh, which means sovereign and or maliki, like a, the owner, like with a uh, with little longer vowel, right? Maliki can be recited either way. Uh, it changes in recitation because the sound is different, like maliki and maliki, of course, they sound uh, different, but no change in spelling and writing. All right, so I hope that you can go back to the Quran later and uh, see this. Yeah, so we can put ma and so forth. Okay, uh, sometimes. Okay, uh, the difference may require change of spelling or letters, thus the companions must write the difference in separate copy. All right, so here, what you can tell is wa and fa. Okay, this is a prefix in Arabic. Wa, uh, la, so, and therefore, right? So, wa la yakhafu, and they do not uh, uh, afraid, and fa, and so, uh, therefore, they are, not, uh, they are not afraid. So, here is the idea that um, the, uh, the, the the difference copy may have uh, this difference work or far, right? So that's the idea. Now, um, when we talk about uh, uh, Osmani Mustaf, uh, that he asked um, Obay and his team to make uh, several copies and send to different region, uh, send the teachers as well, right, with these uh, uh, copies. Uh, so the spelling uh, uh, in this uh, copies that Osman uh, ordered uh, the team to make, it eliminates certain alif. Yeah? So, Ar Rahman, uh, so I would say Alif Lam Ra, Mim Nun. Okay? It was spelled without the alif. Uh, in fact, it can be spelled Alif Lam Ra, Mim Alif, yeah? without the alif, alif Nun. So, the spelling may drop alif. This is, uh, you can ask why, and then we will. Uh, you know, there is an answer for it. When a word can be recited in two ways, the spelling is made both to allow the uh, made to allow both recitation, just like we mentioned earlier, right? So, um, uh, the the idea is that uh, the copies are made for the, uh, the the recitation to be done and recited, right? So uh, either someone wants to read. Uh, recite Maliki, it is possible, or Maliki, it is possible in this script. So the Mus'haf were written in Kufi script. This is the Kufi script, which later on I will explain to you what is this. Um, so the script is almost incomprehensible to the modern day uh, Arabic readers. Um, so it is true, right? So you see here, uh, this was, uh, I, I think this is in the 8th century. Um, Kufi uh, script. Um, uh, this is Surah Al Hijr. Uh, like a, you know, when I put this side, this is a, a nas, uh, um, script. Of course, this is what we find in our Mus'haf today. Wajaa ahlul Madinati yastabshirun. Right. So you can see here Wajaa. There is no Hamza, and then ahlul Madinati. Yes, Tabshirun here, right? So um, here you can ask, like, uh, you know, will they be able to recite this correctly the way the Professor Salam gave them? Yes, uh, this is because it was common writing form during those those time. Right? So that's how um, it was written. Things uh, the, the 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 Arabic was written that way. Uh, so obviously, uh, for our twenty first century mind. Uh, we will not be able to comprehend how it is. But uh, we have also to understand that 
how did they know to recite it? Because they memorized the Quran as well, right? So there was no Hamza, there was no dot, there was no uh, uh, tashkil, we call it, right? So, so like this is dot, okay? So there is no dot here, there is vowel, this tashkil, we call it, right? So um, sometimes we may ask, like, how do they know? Because they know uh, not only that this is their writing during that time, but also they have the uh, uh, memorization of the Quran, but also grammatically. Uh, so the Arabic, I'm not, uh, I'm not an Arabic grammar person, but uh, simple uh, grammar will not allow it. Like say, uh, what we cannot read wajah ahla. No, we cannot read ahla here. We must read ahlu, and we cannot read madinata here. It doesn't sound right. It has to always be ahlul madinati. So grammatically correct. Uh, so that is the idea that in, in, in Usman, Usman Mus'haf, it was written in Kufi script. Uh, it was uh, written in a way that it may allow uh, um, different uh, recitation if it is possible, right? So, and the dots and the vowel, you ask yourself when it is made. Uh, is it like a, something that um, uh, if the prophet um, you know, didn't put in the Mus'haf during that time, so it was the effort by the later generation during the Umayyad Caliphate. Um, Ali radiallahu anhu uh, as well made an effort uh, to ask one of the uh, people at that time, uh, Abu Aswa Adwali, to make the uh, diacritical mark, the dots, and so. And the Umayyad Caliph as well made the effort. And later, the Kufi, this Kufi script is replace uh, completely replaced with this that we are familiar with that what uh, what we call is as nas script right? so obviously for us today uh, like uh, this is um, familiar right so um, so that is the idea so we get the history um, there is no uh, room for us to doubt that there is a um, additional uh, verses uh, or, or uh, some kind of mistake that it may occur. No, it didn't, right? So um, that clear up our understanding here. Uh, this is also one of the issue that uh, I would want to put forward uh, here. I will quickly, um, does the arrangement of the verses and the surah uh, made by, uh, made by the Sahaba? Is it like based on their opinion, like they decided themselves, like Ubay and the Caliph and the Sahaba during that time, do they decide and make based on their ijtihad to put which surah and which ayah on their own? Yeah? So there are different opinion, obviously. Uh, the third opinion is um, uh, perhaps the strongest. I quoted this Dr. Yasir Qadri. He said perhaps the strongest opinion that says uh, it was uh, the, the, the surah and the verses order were from the command of the prophet. And this goes back to the history that we learned last class that uh, every year uh, the prophet recited the Quran and the Jibril and he did twice um, uh, in Ramadan, uh, in the last Ramadan of his life and Zaid himself witnessed the recitation, right? So uh, here it gave us the idea that the Sahaba knew the arrangement because the Prophet Sallallahu uh, taught them so. Yeah? So, um, and and of course, these are the uh, the, the, the um, uh, evidences, the proofs that show um, the Prophet would tell them uh, where to put in which surah and uh, which verses. Yeah? So the. Uh, this is, um, and also, uh, this is another important aspect in our Islamic intellectual tradition. And Dr. Hasmina mentioned about the Hamuhadisun, and also uh, here about in our Islamic intellectual tradition, consensus, uh, ijma, is very important uh, because um, when we talk about ijma, when we talk about consensus, usually a huge number of people agree. Or on something, or disagree on something, and it is impossible uh, for them to uh, overlook uh, the error or to agree on a mistake. Yeah? So this is a, a, in, in our intellectual tradition. This is admissible um, evidence uh, 
so something that we can make uh, uh, the argument for. Uh, so we can use this argument to uh, to, to to provide uh, the proof. Yeah? So this is part of us. It's very important. Uh, all right. So um, here I, I think um, the the the. The later generation, even Fuzaifa uh, is a, a Sahaba, right? So, um, and Imam Karmani, the later scholar, said the arrangement of surah is from Allah. Yeah? So, um, this is uh, what we believe in. And the Quran is written in Lawr al Mahfuz in this arrangement. It was recited to Jibril uh, um, uh, by the Prophet in, the order, in this order every year. It means the Prophet. Uh, learn from Jibreel, uh, recited to Jibreel. Uh, this is also part of our uh, learning process, uh, the Quran and the Hadith as well. Uh, when we talk about when learning uh, the Quran, um, uh, the Jibreel is considered like the teacher, the prophet himself learn from Jibreel and they do this, um, what we call a tasmiyah, like um, listening. Jibreel will listen, should there be a mistake, then he, he should be able to detect. And so um, this is the idea that we um, want to hear, right? So um, that we now understand the arrangement of the surah and the uh, verses of the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicate uh, by Jibreel to the Prophet sallam, and the Prophet himself communicated this uh, arrangement of the uh, surah uh, and the verses to the Sahaba who later on communicate to the tabi'in and then uh, the uh, and put also in the compilation. Yeah? Um, so <clears throat> that is the idea we want to understand. Um, the ahruf, okay, we go back to the idea that um, sometimes we uh, we hear about this ahruf of the Quran, uh, the seven ahruf, and uh, what is it? Okay, Let, uh, uh, shortly or briefly, we can say it's the various ways that the verses of the Quran are read. And so it says um, sometimes people uh, translate ahruf as modes or dialects. Um, so uh, uh, we may ask ourselves, like um, this ahruf, um, uh, is it known to the prophet? Was it known to the uh, sahaba? Yes. Uh, so this is the uh, not only that. Uh, th this is the uh, evidence. The prophet sallam said that Jibril recited Quran to me in one half, and I recited back to him. But I requested him to increase the number of half half until we stop at seven ahruf yeah so uh obviously the prophet mentions a seven ahruf and uh, of course we here today we ask ourselves what is it so it is about the various ways that the verses of the quran are read um it has reached me that these seven ahruf are essentially one in many uh, this uh, shihab uh, az zuhri one of the uh, narrators in this particular hadith um, so it's, he said that it has reached me that these seven ahruf are essentially one in many uh, this is a very important statement that we need to understand uh, uh, even though uh, we may see uh, you know the the different uh, uh, letter her for example but essentially the meaning of that is one they do not differ about what is permitted or forbidden you know so this is a very important statement made by uh, azuri all right so um and this ahruf um, the recitation of the quran in seven recitation is narrated through mutawatir manner um, uh, you are familiar with this uh, mutawatir uh, uh, terminology. Uh, we keep on mentioning in hadith, particularly even in the Quranic context, because it talks about the preservation of knowledge. Our intellectual uh, tradition uh, uh, admitted this mutawatir as one of the ways where knowledge is preserved and transmitted. Yeah, so um, where the huge number of narrators, uh, it is impossible for them to agree on error. So the seven ahruf of uh, recitation is um, transmitted through a huge number of uh, chain of transmitters that uh, it is impossible for them to agree 
uh, on error. So it means that it is real, it is the fact, it is true. It's not something that is made up by the Sahaba. Yeah? So um, the, the Jibreel said to the Prophet, you know, this is another report, say that um, uh, the Prophet reported, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in seven ahruf, yeah? in whichever half they recite, that would be right. So um, the, 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 the fact remains that the different ahruf are from Allah and not from the companions. Uh, so it's not made up. So it is safe to conclude that the Prophet chose which half to recite, which recitation to recite to a particular sahaba to facilitate easy memorization. This helps us to understand why there are seven, why not only one, so that everyone recites the same thing. Um, uh, the Prophet and the Quran, uh, sorry, the, prof the Quran was given to, uh, obviously, to the community of the Prophet and who had uh, different uh, dialects, obviously. So to facilitate um, memorization, then the Quran was revealed in. Um, in the seven half. Yeah? Um, uh, and also the fact remained that we need to, to understand that the Prophet did not teach all the ahruf to all the companions. I'll go back to the earlier point. It goes back to the idea that uh, some sahaba may have problem uh, memorizing because of this uh, ayahs and before he gave this particular recitation. The other sahaba may have not have problem with that and therefore he would not give. So the idea remained the same that it was from the Prophet وسلم, that he recited sometimes uh, to one sahaba in a different uh, dialect, different recitation to facilitate the memorization. So um, there are different opinions. Obviously, I choose uh, two that uh, here uh, help us to understand what does seven ahruf mean? It means uh, there's seven dialects um, in Arabic for Lugat of the Arabs prevalent during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi the, the dialect of Quraysh, Huzayn, Tamim, Saqif, Kinana, and Yemen. Uh, so these are the, uh, it, sometimes the ahruf is the, uh, is understood to mean dialect. Sometimes the, uh, the, the, uh, some, some scholars will say that Ahruf denotes the seven ways of recitation, lahajat, hmm? such that words are replaced by their synonyms, that the seven Ahruf have the exact same meaning, eh? but different wording. So this is, uh, uh, sorry, um, this is the, the, the idea that we want to understand even though uh, the uh, Quran may be recited in one half and the other person will recite in another half doesn't mean that they are, their meanings are different and just the, the wordings are. So seven ahruf represent variations that occur in letters or words and pronunciation for easy uh, memorization. Right, so uh, does the Ahruf exist today? Um, so the scholars are in the tenure, later scholars, like Ashatibiyah, Razi, and Kasir argue that Osman preserved the Ahruf to the extent that the script of his Mustaf allowed him to do. In other words, there's, there was only a portion of the seven Ahruf was preserved in the copies of Osman. Uh, how do we explain this, that the script of Osman Mus'haf did not have dots, vowel, and Hamza? Does it allow the different recitation, right? So remember the Kufi uh, uh, script earlier? So any, uh, if, we, if someone want to read Ma or Maliki or Malik, uh, right? Maliki or Malik, uh, so it is uh, possible, uh, right? So the recitation of the Prophet which Jibreel in the last Ramadan of his life, eliminated the ahruf that Osman did not preserve. In other words, Osman uh, preserved the uh, recitation that Zaid and his team managed to put in the copies. Uh, so therefore, it's only a portion. Um, that is the idea, right? Uh, another issue that related to um, our recitation, uh, our uh, the, sorry, let me put it this way. Another issue that come across, uh, that we come across uh, is the qira'at, right? Qira'at, what is it? Qira'at again? Um, uh, in some uh, departments in the um, Muslim world, qira'at is uh, one of, not only one of the courses, sometimes they have uh, 
Qira departments, right? So it is Qira, like a recitation, so a particular methodology of reciting the Quran. It is recitation. This recitation or the recitation is named after a reciter who recited the Quran in particular manner and was well known in the field. They represent Okay, the recitation represents the various ways the Sahaba learned the Quran from the Prophet. And again, again, uh, we need to understand the recitation uh, that we have today. Or maybe we come across uh, a, a very uh, not so and not so known recitation come from uh, the uh, Sahaba who learned the Quran from the Prophet. So again, you know, it's not like a, the recitation is just a, like an open book that someone can just come and read. No, it doesn't work that way. It is also like a, like I said, you know, in, in our uh, intellectual tradition and the Sahaba, when they did something, uh, they did it based on the knowledge that they uh, got from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you talk about the Quran, of course, um, recitation that he, the Prophet, did with Jibril Alayhi Salam, right? So, um, the Qira'at, like I said, uh, you know, it's a, a name after the teacher, it's one location. Uh, so, it varies in words and pronunciation and the rule of the recitation, what we call Tajwi, yeah? So, um, the companion, uh, what the, the, the scenario that we may imagine is that the Sahaba knew the recitation, and then they taught the uh, successor, the Tabi'in, and the Tabi'in uh, teach the Tabi'in, tabi right? the successor of the successors. And it began this way. And when you think of it, the recitation uh, that we read today, obviously, right, is also transmitted uh, the way the Hadith is transmitted. You know, it has a teacher. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, I, I, I will try to put uh, in, in the, a uh, slide later I didn't have time. It's a book from um, uh, Professor Matson who included uh, the chain of transmitters for uh, the uh, recitation of a uh, girl, young girl who memorized the Quran in uh, Damascus to, uh, in the in year 2000, right? So I will show you, inshallah, but you get the idea. Uh, in, in other words, um, the, 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 the recitation of these uh, scholars that we have, the Qari, throughout the history of Islam is not just the uh, invention of anybody, but rather it was um, uh, transmitted and listened to uh, from a student, uh, by a student from a teacher, obviously, right? So, um, and obviously there are different, uh, I think you're familiar. Um, this, what are the conditions for the acceptable recitation? Like I said, it, you know, it's not like an open uh, recitation that we just can read however we want, you know, if our, of course, our, we have to do the Tajweed, our Quran teacher will say, well, you know, go back, it doesn't sound right, and so forth. But, you know, what is it that usually what scholars use to measure um, the recitation, right? So if it is acceptable recitation, um, this will give us the idea, like, what did uh, the, the tools that the ulama uh, were, uh, were using to kind of uh, authenticate, to verify uh, the originality, the authenticity of the recitation. Right? So the recitation must conform with the Arabic grammar. Remember when I, I showed you the ayah uh, waja'a and earlier right, in this Kufi and uh, waja'a waja, waja ahlul uh, Madinati, right? So, um, uh, so it has to conform with the Arabic grammar. Uh, remember, the Quran was revealed in Arabic, right? So the recitation must conform with one of the most careful Osman as well, and the recitation must has chain of transmitter that went back to the Prophet So this this gives us the idea that. Uh, even the uh, recitation that we recite today can be traced back to the Prophet Wasallam. It was not an invention, the recitation was not uh, invention or ijtihad or the Sahaba.
right so uh the qira today uh, the, we what what the majority of the muslim today recite so here i took it from the tayasir qadi book he said that 95% of us read from this um uh, qira of hafs and asif right so these are the different uh, in other words uh, most of us recite uh, the qira of, of hafs Yeah, from us all right so uh that is the uh the recitation and uh, issues related to um most of us many all right um okay, where do i go here okay um i want to continue the lecture uh, for week three today inshallah uh this is uh, Okay, uh, today, uh, the, uh, according to our course outline, um, so I always follow course outline because that helps us to understand what, uh, the, 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 the arrangement of uh, the course, how it goes, right? So uh, we're supposed to talk about a very basic um, uh, tools or knowledge, uh, external knowledge of the Quran that help uh, the Sahaba, that helps uh, the succeeding generation and up till today help us to understand the message of the Quran, what we call it as a Makki and Madani revelation. So in Makki and Madani revelation is one of the um, topics, uh, the knowledge Uh, that is so important for the uh, interpreter, the mufassir, to have uh, uh, for before or as a prerequisite to understand the message of the Quran. Yeah, so to help uh, uh, the mufassir to explain the message of the Quran. Yeah, so we want to understand what is it, how do we define it, And I think most importantly, excuse me, at the end of the discussion um, today, excuse me, uh, the end of discussion today, we will be able to understand and appreciate that Maki and Madani help us not only to understand, you know, this knowledge is very important when we talk about the Quran, when we want to understand the Quran, especially for the uh, specialists like the Mufassirun, or the fuqaha, the jurist, right? So, but um, also for us as an individual Muslim who live in the 21st century, who, um, you know, live Islam as a, as a deen, as a religion, we want to understand uh, well, how does the Quran, well, when we talk about the Quran, of course, Allah message, right? how does the Quran approach to teaching, uh, communicating the message of Islam? Uh, this goes back to the question, to the idea that the Quran was revealed in 23 years uh, in different, uh, uh, in, in two major uh, locations, Makkah and Medina, right? So obviously, um, uh, the, the scholars uh, understand that uh, these two locations have a different political, Uh, a spiritual, theological, and social, moral, economic context. They are different. Therefore, um, in, in other words, um, when we read the Quran, it is important that we understand the context of its revelation. Um, where it was revealed, was it, a, uh, it was revealed, uh, um, before the Hijra or after the Hijra, which define Makki and Madani revelation. Yeah? So uh, this is what I, I think we, so we want to um, learn today. Okay. All right. So here, um, just quickly, the first revelation is uh, the first five, first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq, right? So we know this. The last revelation, this is Surah Al-Baqarah 281. Uh, when Allah say, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Right? And in fear a day when you will be returned to Allah, then every soul will be compensated for what it earned and they will not be wrong. 
that is they will be treated they will not be treated unjustly so this is the uh, based on uh, the report by Ibn Abbas, he said that the Prophet lived nine nights after this verse was revealed, then uh, he saw uh, he saw Allah wasallam, passed away. Yeah? So this is um, just uh, related to uh, the revelation anyway. So what is Maki and Madani revelation and how do we define it? Yeah? So um, one thing we must understand, uh, the Prophet did not remark whether a verse is a Maki or Madani. So he did not say like, oh, this is Maki or Madani, or Madani revelation, rather the Sahaba did it. Uh, the Sahaba did it because they understand the importance of knowing the Maki or Madani revelation. Obviously, um, especially so after the Prophet uh, passing, passing, um, the, uh, the Sahaba understand the importance of knowing where it was revealed, when, and so forth. Right? So this is very important. Uh, we understand it is the external knowledge, uh, historical facts that the Sahaba uh, knew, and they communicate, um, you know, transmitted these facts um, about the revelation uh, to uh, among themselves and to the uh, the, the successors, of course. Uh, Ibn Abbas, or Ibn Mas'ud say that as, uh, he's a Sahaba himself, right? I swear by Allah, beside whom there is no God, there is no surah in the Quran, except that I know where it was revealed. Because obviously, uh, Ibn Mas'ud uh, lived during the time the Prophet, you know, so he, we call it a witness of the revelation. And there is not a single verse in the Quran except that I know the reason behind its revelation. And if there were any person that knew about knew more about the Quran than I did, it was possible that I reached him. I will write. Uh, I will write on my camel towards him to get his knowledge. This is the fervor and the enthusiasm of the Sahaba to get the knowledge external to the Quran. Right, so they want to learn more about anything um, about the Quran. Uh, so this remark by Al Baqilani is a very important for us to understand. Why would the Sahaba did that anyway? Right. So for what reason? So uh, Al Baqilani said that this preservation is based upon strong enthusiasm of the companion and the successor, like students of certain scholar or ulama follow up on the works of their teacher and memorized his speech and books and kept the record of what he wrote first and what he wrote last. So too, the Quran was preserved and the Sahaba and the uh, um, successor of the student of the Quran. In fact, to, go to an even greater extent for the eagerness uh, for it was even stronger, right? So um, they describe uh, the effort and the eagerness of the Sahaba. Right, so how do we define, there are dif uh, different definitions of uh, Maki and Madani, and I think uh, the, the the most common one, uh, some uh, scholars, will, uh, other opinion would define it based on the, lo the location, uh, you know, if it were revealed in Mecca, then it was a Meccan uh, revelation, or Med if it was revealed in Madani, uh, Medina, then it's Madani revelation, uh, or um, some scholars would uh, define it based on the address, who, whom to whom the Quran speaking to, uh, the addresses, you know, like is it the Meccan, the, the Kufa, the idolaters, the Muslim, uh, the Ansar, or uh, the Prophet himself, right? So obviously, uh, this is not very easy to identify. Then um, these uh, scholars, uh, most scholars would uh, define revel uh, Madani and Maki revelation based on the time. What time we're talking about here is the Hijrah. Hmm? So Maki revelation is any ayah or surah that was really before the uh, hijrah or the migration of the Prophet وسلم, to Medina and Maki revelation, uh, Madani revelation was revealed after the hijrah of the Prophet to Medina. So the, uh, the hijrah is the defining line that differentiate between Maki and the Madani revelation. Yeah, so this def definition actually uh, disregard um, the place of the revelation or the addressee yeah, because it's focused on the time. Uh, right. So, for example, this is uh, Surah um, 
uh, Al-Ma'ida verse 3, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati wa raditu lakum al-islama dina. And Surah Al-Ma'ida, uh, Al ayah 3, it is uh, revealed, it was revealed at Arafah. Uh, at the farewell pilgrimage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 10 Hijrah, um, a number of months before uh, the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was revealed in Makkah, but because it was revealed after the Hijrah, therefore it is considered the Madani revelation. Okay, um, so <clears throat> Later scholars usually re rely on the reports from the Sahaba to know the Maki and Madani revelation, right? Because obviously the Prophet did not remark uh, the, uh, this process whether or not they are Maki or Madani. So the Sahaba would, uh, you know, report that they were narrated. It was revealed here and there. Uh, therefore, um, the succeeding generation, the Tabi'i, the successors, and later scholars depend on the uh, in, uh, the reports um, by the Sahaba, right? So um, it, it, basically, the Sahaba would say, "Okay, this is the this verse was revealed here, and this, you know, just like here, uh, this Arafah was reported by the Sahaba." Okay. Um, now, this is uh, this is uh, what I said uh, earlier that it will help us to understand our religion better. It will help us to understand how does the Quran approach in teaching our religion. Uh, it will help also to understand that when we talk about our religion to different people today, you know, either to Muslim, either to non-Muslim, it helps us to understand um, how does the Quran approach um, in communicating the message of the Quran. And like I said, Maki revelation is the revelation that was revealed before the Hijra. Um, that means the 13 years of the life of the prophet, as a prophet, right? So in Mecca. So the scholars usually, uh, you know, the Arama of the Quran usually talk about um, and identifying the central themes, uh, common themes, that the that we can identify in Maki revelations. Right? Uh, first and foremost, and of course, uh, this is the call for Tawhid. Right? So um, Surah Al Ikhlas, uh, you know, it was revealed in Makkah. Talk about uh, the uh, the unity of Allah, His attributes. You know, uh, this is the idea that. Uh, contextually, of course, uh, Islam came at the uh, community, among the community where uh, idolaters, politism is well known. Uh, of course, they, uh, the polities, the pagans, uh, they, knew, they knew about one God because they heard about uh, Ibrahim who built the Kaaba, right? But of course, the understanding of God um, is distorted with uh, the uh, the understanding of uh, God, right? So they associated God and many other beings and so forth. So the Quran came within this context to talk about we need to purify the belief, right? So we need to understand who is the God that we worship, uh, we, what is his attributes, right? So what is his names and what these names and attributes denotes and how are they different than the belief that is uh, dominating the, the Jahilian community at that time, right? So the Quran came uh, to purify this belief uh, that has been corrupted uh, throughout generations, you know, remember the Quran talk about is these people worship uh, their ancestors' religion, but it's it's not even right uh, worship. It's not even the right God that they worship. Uh, it's not even pure Tawhid that they worship. Right. So, um, and also uh, here, uh, formation of Akida and disbelief. Right. So, as a Muslim, as a religion that came to purify. Um, this belief, uh, the corrupted beliefs of the people of that time. So what does the Quran introduce? What else is uh, supposed to be believed in? Right? So the prophethood, um, 
talking about the previous prophet, of course, this is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam bring the teaching of Islam, but uh, he also continued uh, the previous teaching of Tawheed and the belief in angels and the belief in the revealed, uh, previously revealed, revealed scriptures, the day of judgment, heaven and hell, talking about the accountability of our actions. Right, so um, you know the description of the pagans, like they didn't like the idea that one day we're gonna die and then we will be resurrected. So they were questioning, like, how could we be uh, dead and be alive again? Right. So this is uh, the purification of belief and formation of belief. Right. So um, that means also um, correct belief is very important uh, to. Uh, be you know um, in, in in this uh, teaching of Islam, um, that is the first thing, right? So one of the teaching uh, of Islam during the Maki revolution, and not only about belief. Uh, so um, sometimes um, we we overdo with the belief, and we kind of compromise with the morality. Um, one of the um, aspects that the put and try to purify the people, the community of uh, Muslim in Medina at the time is their morality. You know, to establish the morality uh, with the conduct that are supreme uh, to purify themselves from the pre-Islamic immoralities, right? Uh, what is the idea, for example, here? Uh, Surah al -An, of course, this is Surah Maki, yeah? so uh, uh, in this ayah um, here, 151 to 153, um, here we're talking about the prohibition uh, that the Quran talk about in, this, in several ayah here, but in a way that give us the idea that uh, it is not very kind of uh, detailed, but it's enough for them to understand this is prohibited. Yeah? So this is not the correct moral conduct. Um, what it means, uh, let's, I think uh, it's better that I put the uh, translation here. Huh? Okay. Uh, here, Allah says to the Prophet, uh, say, oh Prophet, come, uh, to the people around him, come, let me recite to you what your Lord has forbidden to you. Huh? Or haram. So haram, the word haram here, forbidden to you. That it means that mm, from now on, we need to stop doing this. And this is uh, the Maki revelation. Yeah? So do not associate others with him. This is not doing the uh, shirk, right? Do not worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not fail to honor your parents. Okay, so this is one of the um, moral uh, uprightness that the Quran wants to uh, engage the community of uh, Makkah. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty. Right? The poverty that the, uh, remember the, uh, uh, a female infanticide that um, the people of that time uh, used to kill their female, uh, of course, as a child, right? Uh, because either a shame, because, you know, contextually, uh, the community of that time, they get, uh, they are honored and protected by the tribe. So if a father uh, cannot protect the daughter, that is very, uh, a, a very dishonoring thing to do uh, by a father to the daughter. So he would choose um, to kill his daughter then, you know, to see her growing and not having his protection. So that's the idea. Uh, or, uh, of course, uh, sometimes they're afraid that they may not be able to feed the children, right? So uh, the, the female uh, daughters. So, okay, so we provide to you and for them. So this is uh, one of the prohibition. And do not come near indecencies or immorality, immoralities openly or secretly. Uh, do not take a human life, it means do not commit murder. Uh, so, and also stay well away from the property of the orphans. Obviously, um, the orphans uh, mis mistreating the orphans or misappropriating the property of the orphan is not um, only uh, committed by the um, uh, the Jahilian community, but rather we see in Surah al kahfi also the description of uh, Musa and Khidi, right, about uh, the, 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 uh, the idea that uh, 
uh, he would want to uh, protect the uh, property of this uh, orphan. So obviously the idea is that throughout human history, it's part of human, uh, um, uh, I think, uh, um, shortcoming that you know, they, they may fall to uh, misappropriating the orphan's property. So, okay, so what we get the idea is that these are some prohibition, right? So that helped the Muslim at that time to uh, stop, okay, to stop and um, try to uh, enter this consciousness of being a Muslim. And so when we become a Muslim, this is what we're not supposed to do. And so it is, um, it helps us to understand today that, you know, like uh, beside the belief, we also need to work on our uh, akhlaq, our uh, conduct, yeah? because it's a part of the training uh, of the Quran to the uh, new Muslims in Makkah. Uh, but of course, it doesn't mean that we will work, when we were born Muslim, we are free from this, right? So that's the idea. Okay. Uh, and the the the, uh, the Maki revelation as well help us to understand the um, the trials and the tribulations and the stories of the previous uh, community uh, in uh, that were recorded by the Quran, for example, in Surah Kaf and story of the people of the cave. Yeah. So of course, the Quran mentioned in general the idea is that we the uh, readers. Uh, Muslim today, when we read, uh, we understand the lessons of it. You know, the uh, about um, uh, fighting or uh, struggling to keep our faith, for example. Yeah? So, um, and this is the idea. Huh? So, um, as for the that was about the uh, Madani, uh, sorry, Maki uh, uh, revelation. Um, how much time I have? A uh, little. Um, According to me, 45, I may have another five minutes or what? Um, the common themes of Madani revelation is uh, basically uh, now contextually the Muslim moved to uh, uh, Mecca. Sorry? Papa. I, I couldn't hear someone's sense. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll give you five minutes. Okay, yeah. all right, so okay. Um, the Madani uh, revelation, however, after the Hijrah, of course, the Prophet Sallam, remember, were welcome, they had the Umas, they had the community, and beside that, um, there were uh, different uh, uh, tribes, the Arab tribes, uh, the Ansar, and uh, the immigrant, um, and then also uh, uh, the Jewish community and the um, Christian communities there as well. So it's, pretty, uh, it's a very pluralistic uh, society over there. Therefore, we can we can see um, the, um, the the message of the Quran, the ayah of the Quran that revealed that time uh, has these nuances, right? This consideration taking the uh, now, uh, the individual, the familial, the societal relationship, uh, war and peace, divorce, marriage, non the relationship with non-Muslim, or uh, punishment for specific crimes to mention. And I think uh, we get the idea here, I want to move here. And the stories of the Jews and the Christian and their faults and shortcomings as well, because during this time, they were uh, the Jews uh, and the Christian in the, uh, uh, the, the Medina area, right? So um, here it talk about uh, one of the uh, Madani uh, ayah here is that we reveal the Torah with guidance and light and the, and the prophets who had submitted to God judge according to it for the Jews, right? So the Jews were given the books and then the book and uh, to their prophets who did the rabbis and the scholars in accordance with that part of God's scripture. So basically it used to be that the, the Jews were having the book and they uh, used to practice it, follow the teaching of the scripture and so forth, right? So so, um, uh, so the, uh, the the idea is that um, here the Quran mentioned uh, about this uh, community uh, of the Jews and 
their uh, history uh, about them. Yeah? So in general, yeah. So um, also here in Surah Al Munafiqun, it's Madani revelation, and it's uh, exposing the hypocrites and the uh, and their plots. And so of course, uh, obviously, there was no hypocrisy and hypocrites. Uh, in Medina, uh, in Makkah, sorry, because uh, you know it was not easy to be a Muslim in Makkah. So uh, someone with uh, sincerity and sincere intention to be Muslim only could survive in that climate of hostility from uh, the kufar, from the pagans, and so forth. Uh, so, but now um, being a Muslim is a common, is normal. Therefore. Um, uh, there were groups of uh, people who um, identify themselves as Muslim, but in their hearts, they do not believe in uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the Islamic teaching. I mean, they, they don't want to be a Muslim. Uh, so the Quran talk about them. And here in Surah Al-Munafiqo, in the 12 ayah, talk about them. And I think uh, you can read on your own. All right. So uh there there are the, the scholars have identified the maki revelation with certain specific characteristic um that any ayah or surah that has in both color therefore um, it is a maki revelation or if there is a huruf al muqata'at except uh, huruf muqata'at are the alif lam mim or yasin or taha right except al baqarah and al imran because these two surahs even though they have uh, al-muqatta'at that they are uh, uh, madani uh, revelation right all surah that have verse of prostration such that so that is a makki uh, surah uh, all surah that mentioned the previous prophet story of adam and the creation i uh, usually the scholars would say that uh, makki uh, surah, uh, the verses tend to be uh, shorter, succinct, and using strong words, and so, and the opposite is the Madani revelation. Usually, um, we can identify when it talks about the crime, uh, punishment for crime, like Hudud, right? Uh, surah that mentioned about hypocrisy, hypocrisy and hypocrites, except Surah al Hud, which is uh, um, Maki revelation, right? Every surah that addresses the Jews and the Christian that mention the jihad, and generally the surah tend to be longer. And why do we talk about this uh, knowledge again to understand the context and the revelation? And yeah, so I mentioned throughout the lecture. Now we understand it is important for us uh, to understand. Uh, you know the revelation uh, if one revelation is revealed in our file let's say okay we know the context of this it helps us to understand the quran especially for the mufassirun this is a very important external knowledge that helps them to interpret the quran okay and insight to the life of the prophet obviously you know uh, his life in Mecca uh, was much uh, different than his life in Medina, let's say. Oh, and uh, the third is uh, the approach to communicating the message of Islam uh, that take into account the addressee. Yeah? So for us today, it's very important to understand when we talk to about Islam to our non-Muslim friends, neighbors, and so forth, how we, we talk about it. Um, so, you know, like a, Again, uh, the Quran talk about this in the sense that we emphasize the Tawheed, right? So uh, when we talk about Islam, uh, we know Tawheed is our central, uh, uh, very central to our religion. Uh, upright, upright moral conduct, love and fear and trust for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All, all this help us to uh, live not only as a Muslim, but also to communicate this uh, you know, for for um, for other uh, people to understand what Islam is. A lot of time that today people don't understand Islam, and what they hear or know about Islam is just from the media, which is not necessarily true, right? So um, this is uh, I remember one of the uh, person I know when I met. Uh, she's a Catholic, and she said, "I I uh, learn more about my religion as a Catholic when I." Um, talk about my religion and learn more about Islam. So it, it is something that you know we learn. That's why the Quran talk about the Jews and the Christian, so that we Muslim understand their shortcomings, what they did, they did throughout the history, and also uh, to understand about our religion and about uh, our potential shortcomings. Right? 
So uh, the gradual approach to the revelation and the teaching of Islam. Uh, so this is again uh, connected to the um, um, point number three. Uh, so uh, the Madani and the Surah I put here so you can um, uh, see here. Uh, the number may vary depending on the scholars, but this is the number that I got from uh, the book. So uh, what you can see the Madani Surahs are 22 and um, the um, Maki Surah uh, 82 and the Surah that the scholars could not agree with the period. So it means that the um, the scholars could not agree because they may have different uh, contradicting uh, uh, narration or reports about it. So therefore, they cannot uh, decide. So in our intellectual tradition, this is something that we also have to admit. If we cannot decide, then we say, well, this is what we disagree upon. This is what happened. Right? So all right. So I thought that um, yeah. it's done. Inshallah, I give back to um, Dr. Thank you very much.